Hey, this is Zach from Born and Wound, and today I'm taking a look at the Baltic Aquascape. Uh, so this is a follow-up to Baltic's first release watches, which came out last year. They came out with a lot of fanfare, did a huge Kickstarter. Press outlets such as ourselves uh, really were quite fond of them. I personally uh, really enjoyed the watch. I'll show it to you here. This was their first watch, the Bicompacts, uh, which was a Seagull-powered chronograph. Uh, just a huge hit, it really nailed the kind of vintage uh, aesthetic that I think everyone's trying to go for. Did so with a really nice amount of finesse and character. So it just really caught on and these have continued to be very popular. I think the only problem with this is that it set them up with a really big challenge, which is how do you follow up a really successful first start? So they went to the logical next place, which was to do a vintage diver. <clears throat> and they did so in a very smart way. So rather than coming up with an entirely new concept for it, they sort of built off of the uh, language that they already had, as well as some of the case design that they already had to create a, a new dive watch, something that feels very different, but still part of the family of Baltic watches that have currently uh, come out. So the Aquascape, obviously kind of a tribute to uh, mid-century dive watches, the name itself Aquascape, very close to Bathyscape, which were you know these classic uh, Blanc Pan dive watches. You have definitely strong, some very strong aesthetic cues taken from there, but Baltic you know, kind of took it into their own direction. The case itself is uh, basically the same case as the original, but modified so that it can use a bezel and also with a higher water resistance of 200 meters and screw down crown. So it's 39 millimeters uh, diameter, 47 millimeters lug to lug with a 20 millimeter uh, lug width, and it's about 12 millimeters thick. And that is to the top of a domed sapphire crystal that uh, is anti-reflective coated and uh, pretty decently as well. This is a pretty gloss dial, so uh, if it didn't have anti-reflective coating on it, you'd definitely get some uh, uh, glare off of that. The original one was a, uh, an acrylic crystal, which you know, I think definitely suited that watch, but I think for a sportier watch, especially you know, a modern sportier watch, going with the Sapphire is probably a safer bet for them, probably something that customers are, are happy to see. Part what's really great about the design of their case is that uh, despite, despite being 12 millimeters thick, which I mean, frankly, is a fairly uh, decent thickness for a dive watch with a 200 meter you know, water resistant, uh, part of that thickness comes from the sapphire crystal, which always kind of disappears. But then the way that the case is designed um, from the side really goes a, a long way to making the watch look and feel thinner. So uh, each of these individual components, the bezel, the mid case, the case back, are individually thin and they stack up to create the 12 millimeters thick. So from the side, it does not really read as thick as all, at all, and it wears, I think, quite thin um, as well. I mean, that's something I felt about the original uh, by Compax uh, too, and I feel like actually with the bezel, it's even more dramatic on the, uh, the new Aquascape model. So that's just a really smart design. While looking at the side as well, um, you know, I think the finishing is pretty apparent here. Very nice uh, brushing along the side, drilled lugs, which is something that we always like, even though, um, and I'll show you this later, the bracelet actually has a quick release system in it, which I'm sure a lot of people will appreciate. Um, very sharp machining. You know, I think that one of the things that really made Baltic stand out was despite the uh, price point and the, you know, uh, kind of middle, you know, $500, $600 price point that they achieved just a very nice level of uh, fit and finish. Uh, the bezel here is a uh, 120 click unidirectional bezel, as you would expect on a design like this. Feels very nice. Uh, this, the insert itself is uh, particularly, I think, a standout feature of this watch. Obviously, it's a big detail, so they spent some time on it. Um, it is a sapphire inlay with um, you know, printing behind that. Um, what I really like about this, obviously, it gives that kind of original sort of uh, you know, acrylic or bakelite sort of look but it is modern, so it is uh, additionally you know, nice and scratch resistant. Um, but they also just really are very fine tuned with their aesthetic. So while it has that vintage appearance, the size of the dots, the typeface, the coloring here on the loom, it works very well with their sort of restrained vintage style. Um, so yeah, I mean, it just goes very well with the dial here. 
And while we're just on it, let's just jump into the dial. So this dial obviously speaks to those mid-century dive watches. The one we have here is the blue and gilt. There's three options. There's, uh, they call it black and silver, black and cream, then blue and gilt. Uh, the blue and gilt, uh, uh, by Convex was, I think, uh, kind of a crowd favorite, so we were really excited to see the dive version of that. So you have this really deep, dark blue. Um, it's beautiful, and some light it looks black, and some light it's a little bit more teal. It's just got a really nice quality to it. And then they use this sort of creamy, guilty sort of loom to uh, play off of the blue, keep things nice and dark and smoky. Definitely has a uh, Definitely has a vintage feel to it that's very appealing and obviously uh, makes sense for the concept. And then the lines around are printed in this kind of faux gold. It's not really a metallic print so much as it is like a dark ochre color. Um, and I actually appreciate that it's not like, not really trying to be gilt so much as it is like gold in tone. Um, I think it actually looks better than like a fake, like a kind of a metallic sort of print. Um, and it just beautifully, you know, responds very beautifully to the loom around. Uh, one nice feature of the dial is that it is a sandwich dial, though only, uh, that is only seen through some of the markers. So the triangles at three, six, and nine are cutouts to a loom layer beneath. So you have a little bit of play of depth there, which is I think a nice little touch, sort of adds a little bit of a, their own twist on it. And when you look also here, you know, something I was saying is that the language is very similar to that of the original watches. So if you look at that 12 numeral, you'll see that that is carried over. So I think that's a nice little connection. So you can definitely see how this is a, a family of watches rather than like uh, completely different uh, concepts. For straps, there are two different options for the Aquascape. There is a tropical rubber strap and a beads of rice bracelet. Clearly we have the, the latter here. Um, they did a really excellent job on this beads of rice bracelet. They got the look down, the feel down. Um, I think it's a very nice choice for this watch. This is a type of bracelet I feel like, I feel like it's maybe coming back a little bit in style. Um, you know, I think people are just getting more into the kind of the nitty gritty of what made some of the vintage watches stand out. And obviously that is in the bracelets as well. We've seen riveted bracelets over the last few years. Um, so it's just a really nice option. Um, it is, uh, it is a quick release as well. So you can see here, it's got these two little quick release bars. That's actually something I haven't seen very often. Um, I think that's a nice touch. Someone's getting a bracelet on can be a pain in the ass. Here, they made it very, very easy. Uh, regarding the tropical rubber strap, while we don't have it here, I have seen it in person. They had it at the Wind Up Watch Fair. Um, it's very well executed. Uh, you know, they spent a lot of time on the details there, so I think that's a nice option as well. Um, if you get the beads of rice bracelet during their pre-order, I believe you also get the uh, tropic strap with that as well, but that's only during the pre-order. Uh, the clasp here um, is a very nicely executed clasp, very simple, you know, single fold over design. Um, nothing too fancy, but nicely executed, especially at the price point. I feel like this is also just an, a, a pleasing looking piece with the brush down the center and polished on the outside, a little Baltic, um, you know, kind of uh, engraved in there. And there's six positions of uh, micro adjustment, which um, I always really appreciate because getting a bracelet just to fit the way, the fit, the way you, exactly you want it. Um, you know, it's always a little bit tricky and if it's off, it can be, you know, very uncomfortable. So always appreciate to see that. Inside of the Baltic Aquascape is a Miyota 9039 movement. Um, that's a lot like the 9015. So it is a 28,800 beat per minute movement. So you have a nice sweeping uh, second hand there, um, but it is a non-date movement. So there is uh, no phantom stop on the crown. I think that's something that a lot of people appreciate. Um, and this is actually a movement that I'd say in the last year or two, we've started to see a lot because it offers that true non-date uh, feature set, which uh, it's kind of hard to get out of uh, other movements. Unsurprisingly, on the wrist, the Baltic Aquascape wears extremely well. Uh, 39 millimeter by 47 millimeter. Um, I mean, that's really, I think, a perfect sort of proportion for a very easy to wear watch. Uh, definitely has a vintage feel to it. You know, this is the smaller um, for a, a contemporary watch, but you know, I think for a dive watch, um, this is really nice, you know, if you kind of compare this to vintage watches, while I haven't ever worn one of the original Blanc Pons, you know, that might have been a little bit smaller, but something like a, uh, you know, an old Submariner would have been very close to this in size, a Tudor Submariner, um, and those feel just really wonderful on the wrist, and I feel like Baltic got that sort of uh, proportioning down. One of the things I really like about Baltic, and this is why I really like the bi-compacts as well, is that when you're wearing it, you really just get the feeling that you're wearing a really stylish 
you know, watch. Maybe it's, it, it doesn't feel like you're wearing an actual vintage watch, but it doesn't feel like you're wearing something super modern either. It's just a really aesthetically well-tuned design, clearly drawing from the past, fits very well. And the fact that they made this watch with, you know, enough of the kind of credentials to make it a usable sport watch, I think is really um, outstanding. The sapphire crystal, sapphire bezel is going to make it so you're, you're not going to be worried about, you know, uh, scratching up a crystal should you, uh, you know, whatever, jump in a pool or something. And the 200 meter water resistance is obviously way more than you need for casual uh, swimming use. So that's just, you know, great to have. A lot of vintage inspired watches, I think, kind of leveled out 100, which frankly, is also more than you need, but doing that little extra, I think, set this, sets this watch um, kind of above and beyond. This colorway also, I mean, i just in love with it. Um, you know, it's got a nice muted feel to it. Obviously, you can see here, I like to wear kind of dark muted tones. It is uh, uh, late fall here in New York City, so I think this goes really well with what I'm wearing and is the kind of watch that I would happily wear on kind of a daily basis with this sort of attire. But then it's a dive watch too, so on the beads of rice, on the rubber, on a, you know, a nylon mill strap. In the summer, this is going to look um, fantastic as well. Uh, so the only thing we haven't talked about is the price point on this watch. Now, unsurprisingly, it's a very uh, approachable price point. At the pre-order, it's going to be $550 on the rubber, $620 on the beads of rice bracelet. After the pre-order is over, it's going to go up about 20% from there. So uh, you can do the math, but it's still in that you know, $600 range. Um, that is, I think, a really, really nice price point for uh, kind of affordable, independent micro-brand watches. It seems to be a price point that people are focusing on. You get a really good watch at a very, uh, you know, with a good value as well. So unsurprisingly, uh, Baltic, you know, I think hit it out of the park again with this Aquascape. And, uh, you know, should you be looking for a vintage-inspired diver or should you be looking for another vintage-inspired diver since there's so many out there now, I definitely think you're going to want to take a look at this guy.